Greetings everyone, the good tonight here with Caboose once more to give you a quick little review. So we're going to be discussing two different types of holsters, particularly for the Glock 2626, but they also work with the Glock 27 if Johnny will stop with it. So that being said, starting with the Blackhawk, we have this one on the lower, uh, the mid-ride holster set up here, which is kind of neat. There is Loctite in the screws, but not a lot, so they don't recommend taking them out, but the way it is set up, you can actually load that in through some uh, molly webbing, which makes it great to go on a granite gear battle belt. Now, the key problem we have here, although I used to really think Blackhawk was kind of cool, the way it has an active retention system and everything, I've gotten lots of word that it is not nearly as uh, safe, totally tubular <laughs> as they would have you believe. So. The problem we have going is the way the Blackhawk works is that it locks the uh, trigger guard of the handgun into place. And it also doesn't hold the most steadiest. And uh, as we'll see, there's going to be some quality issues and concerns that will lead you to want to Safari Land over this. Or other, equi other equivalent, I mean, I've only recently seen Safari Land start getting into their stuff. So, locks that trigger. Now the key thing is in the heat, heat of the moment. Oh. In the heat of the moment, when you go to draw the weapon and all the adrenaline's going and your fingers are a bit shaky, you have to grasp the handgun and press down on the trigger guard release. Now the problem is you're putting pressure down with your finger. And when you do draw the gun, either it'll catch on the side like it's supposed to, or it will slip down into the trigger and negligent discharge. Which, considering it'll be sitting at your hip, means you're going to be shooting either down into the ground and alerting everyone that you are now retarded, or shooting yourself in the leg, which is even worse, and makes the uh, outside makes it, airsoft it would be catastrophic. Yeah, make, it, outside airsoft is catastrophic, and it does make the tourniquet companies a lot of money. Not to mention the R. Although the problem, the thing with tourniquet companies, however, is that they don't want to make a lot of money. It's not a good thing unless it's saving lives, but it should be saving lives from, say, an automobile accident, and not the fact that your holster has betrayed you because it secretly supports, I don't know, Stalin or Bernie Sanders or something. <laughs> so, that being said, the Blackhawk thing is pretty cool. I mean, it, for airsoft-wise, the odds of a negligent discharge are relatively low, because no one's trying to shoot you to kill you, and if they are, using airsoft is probably not what you should be doing. And, uh, yeah, so it's a nifty little thing, but still, it's the trigger pull, it's a matter of time until things go horrendously wrong. So yeah, I did initially like Blackhawk, but I'm been leaning more and more back and far away from them. The more and more issues I'm seeing. Not just this, but also the, uh, the dump pouch I have in the other room for Blackhawk is also made in Vietnam. Which, although they've been coming through pretty well with the reason, was it the East Pacific Trade Agreement or whatever it's called, they're still communist and it's not made in America. And where's my America hat? Quality issues, maybe? Yeah, so quality issues have been going down. I think, I don't know if their holsters are still made in America, actually. Anyways, if you look on the inside of the holster, you got your little mechanisms and everything. But as you can see, there's no padding. It's just straight, reinforced plastic, whatever they use. So there's that. That's pretty nifty. Now, moving on. Actually, I'm going to still need that. I don't know why I threw it. Because I'm a terrible person. So anyway, moving on, we move on to the uh, Blackhawk concealment holster. Now, the main difference with the concealment is that with the normal Safari Land setup, the uh, little tab here to release the uh, chamber lock is, has a little open tab thing, so it's a lot easier to press. This one's just a small nub to work with. So the way this works is on the inside, which is actually felt padded and kind of nice. There's a little uh, latch that goes into the um, oh, I can't, the ejection port little cover here latches in there and keeps your gun secure that way. So for this one you want to press your thumb behind the slide or hammer, depending on your firearm, and slide it nicely in. It actually sits a lot more sturdy than the Black Hawk. There is no shake, as you can see. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So all you have to do to draw this is when you're getting your natural grip on the firearm, when your hand comes down from the, from the back of the slide, presses on this, and it pops right out. And it's ready to go. Now the only reason I'm not actively using this right now is that I have no way to connect it to my Granite Gear Battle Belt. So I could connect it just fine to a normal belt, it's got a little clasp here and everything. Would attach relatively easily, but yeah, I have no way to put on my Battle Belt and I almost never use my handgun anyway. The most I've used my handgun so far is to basically throw it at someone else to use because their primary has gone down. So MP5 is pretty reliable. 
So yeah, that's the way this works. So I, I like this one. The padding's nice, prevents any damage to the exterior of the firearm. It's comfortable. Apparently it's uh, compatible to be used with some type of small flashlight. Or I'm not entirely sure what this screw does. I'm assuming it's for a laser or whatever you can attach to the bottom of your gun. So that's pretty cool. And now the other thing about this is these all both fit the 26, which is my personal favorite, but however, they also fit the 17. Now this is just a cheap Springer, also made by Tokyo Motori, but working with the same port ejection setup, it'll actually fit in here too. There's a little bit of shake, because it's not the highest quality of replica, but still, you can get a Glock 17 to fit in here, and I know plenty of people who like Glock 17s. Although it also works with the Blackhawk, although the Blackhawk is still shaky. There's a little bit of shake in there, so... And it's still the same problem, but yeah, it'll work. both of these will work with a Glock 17, which is totally gnarly. What about price differences? Price differences? They're actually priced quite similarly. I think, well, this is the modified uh, mount for the belt, but still, this runs about 30, 40 bucks, and I paid close to about 30, 35 for the Safari Land, so honestly, if you're going to get an active retention holster, I would highly recommend Safari Land, although that's only for the concealment one. Blackhawk also makes the same similar priced holster for, say, an XDM or any other type of firearm. However, it's going to have the same trigger issue. Whereas the Safari Land, you can get the fancier holsters with the actual tab and everything and the little flippies. But they start running up into the hundreds of dollars. So, honestly, if you're just going to use it for airsoft, you could do the Blackhawk way, but if it was anything that actually fired actual 9mm over, say, 6mm, I would definitely <laughs> invest the extra money in the Safari Land and keep the gun better protected, keep yourself without a bullet in the thigh, and yeah, overall, it is actually, I think it's a bit more aesthetically appeasing to the eye as well. So, yeah. I mean, that's all I really thought of for this review, so pretty short, simple, to the point, Safari Land. It's got their little stag, elk, deer thing going on. The only thing is they're not available on the Japanese market. Yeah, for the Japanese market. Unfortunately, if you want to get Safari Land, you're going to have to be friends of Americans. Yeah, because otherwise, they have a few replica Blackhawks, and I mean, if Blackhawk already has issues with the trigger retention, then fake replicas are probably going to have even more problems. You'll be running to an average of seven to eight thousand yen for a replica. Wow. So yeah, you pay three times the price and it's fake. So, Safari Land. Find cool people who can hook you up. That's apparently where it's at. I think they also make a drop leg, but I remember that being tad pricey. Might be worth looking into. Maybe I'll go for a drop leg holster in the future. But yeah, so they have drop legs. They have a ton of stuff. You can molly mount it, but the molly mounts it's high. It sits too high in the battle bell, they'll t press into the uh, side sappy plate. So, I might look at a drop leg in the near future, and if I get that, I will give you guys another review to let you know the differences. So, yeah. Until then, stay chivalrous, everyone. Cheers.